and welcome to episode 187 of The Eldritch Pod Blast. I am Margaret. I am Jack. And we are a Dungeons and Dragons social aspect, social, social, social commentary podcast mm. where we focus on the social aspect of D&D. We give advice to players and dungeon masters old and new. And leedle, 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 lee. And leedle, 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 lee. <laughs> leedle, leedle, leedle. <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry. I, 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 what, how, how every time. You know how? what? Do you know what's hard to say? What? Dungeons and Dragons. Is it? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Fair. Core identity Dungeons of our podcast. And dragons. Core identity of our professional life. Uh, struggle to say it. Every time. Yeah. Interesting. Do you not just think it's like a tongue to it? Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. I always feel like I'm going to like Dungeons and Dragons. You did a great job there. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank, you. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Take a bow. Thank, yeah, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who do you want to? Who do you want to say this was for? Um, this. This one goes out to my my dog. Yeah. Who persistently? He persists. He, he, persi- he, he hey, does. Hey, he persists. Hey, persists. Hey, he persists. let me tell you that for free. He persists. And crying. Yeah, persists. And sleeping. Yep. And eating. Oh yeah. And pooping. Oh yeah. There's one thing this dog gonna do. It's persist. Persists. Yeah. Oh, it He's certainly persistent. is. Oh yeah. He's yeah. Persistent. So. Today's Am I the Arsehole D&D edition has been sent in by today's sponsor, Many Worlds Tavern. Okay. You may already know them for their delicious D&D themed coffees and teas, but actually their submission today is about their new monthly D&D 5e supplements, Wayward Wonders. Wayward Wonders. The title of this one is, Mm -hmm. Am I the Arsehole for releasing so much content for such a great price? Interesting. Every month on our Patreon, Wayward Wonders, we release at least 20 magic items featuring tavern-written item descriptions and professional art. Okay. Four NPCs, all with their own fleshed-out backstories and slap blocks. Okay. Two magic spells that are completely homebrew and a realm prompt to inspire a whole new campaign setting or maybe just an arc for your current game. Everything's designed in-house alongside human artists from all around the world important <laughs> human artists as well as that we sometimes release bonus content such as familiars looking at you wizards battle maps and more our tiers range from three dollars a month to twelve dollars a month with some tiers including foundry vtt ready versions of all of our content nice we're also big at charity over on Many Worlds Tavern. every month we donate a portion of proceeds to a different gaming related non-profit so far, we've donated over $40,000 to an assortment of charities since 2021. Goodness gracious me. So, with all of that said, am I the asshole? Drink well, roll better, Many Worlds Tavern. Okay, so you're asking me, am I the asshole mm-hmm. for releasing 20 magic items, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. four NPCs, yep. two homebrew spells, yep. and a realm prompt. Realm prompt. Yep. Every month. Okay, I've got a hot take. Go on. Many Worlds Tavern, I think you are the asshole mm. because you didn't tell us sooner. <laughs> no. Oh, golly. I've been spending God. all this time doing all of these things myself <laughs> when you could have been helping me yeah. this entire time. Yeah, and you're asking, hell? am I the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, when was this when I needed this when, when I, I was, first when I was How about that? Head in hands, planning my session, yeah, yeah. crying real tears. Yeah, yeah. Where were you? How about when I needed to roll up that NPC who was a giant slayer? Yeah. How about that? How about that? Where were you? (laughs) Thank you so very much to Many Worlds Tavern for sponsoring this video and honestly letting us have fun with this skit. It was very, very, very fun. Uh, Please, please do go check out Many Worlds Taverns, their wayward wonders over at patreon.com forward slash Many Worlds Tavern and take a look through their four different tiers, all that gives different monthly content. They kindly gifted us a subscription to the Patreon as well. And I really can't stress enough. There is so much. There is so much. It is so beautifully illustrated. It is definitely worth the bang for its buck. Oh my God, absolutely. And the fact that every month, listen, you're not going to get through 20 magic items Twi- every month. In one month? In n- no way. Nah, no not. way. Hey, your players wish. Hey, but- yeah, yeah, they wish. <laughs> they, they're they screaming at you for that. There's no way. And you know what? I love the realm prompt. Yeah. Uh, like, you, you can go through. They have categories for everything, right? You can go through and you can take a look at the realms. And um, they, they vary so much in what they are. And it gives you a world primer, basically. A world primer. And you could do, like, 
once a month world primer little arc four yeah. four sessions hey next month world primer yeah yeah four exactly sessions, new well, arc. exactly Next and you month. know the npcs as well typically uh the npcs kind of follow that cadence as well yeah. and the npcs there's there's backstory you could use them not even just as npcs as play like generated character players if you wanted to as well um and and again uh they're huge on charity yeah they work with again human artists which is a huge thing. which is very important here. yeah it really we, we, really we, is we really really believe that human artists should it, be used Especially in uh, D&D content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And on top of that as well, you know, obviously Wayward Wonders, they're taking steps into the D&D 5e supplements. Uh, I, I think that, and that, by the way, really doing an incredible job with yeah, doing 100%. so. You probably recognize the word, the name Many Worlds Tavern for their genuinely very well-renowned coffees and teas in the D&D space. Yeah. Uh, they also were kind enough to send us some of their coffees. We had the... Homely House yes. and Dragon's Nest. Yeah. And I'm really not saying you, this. Uh, you loved the Homely House. I loved the Homely you, House. I loved the Dragon's yeah, Nest. Yeah, I, I, I like I Dragon's Nest like, too, but... A slightly more uh, yeah. fruity and uh, yeah. out there coffee, but you, yeah. you, you normally are a big on the house blend. Yeah, that was one of your favorite house blends. Oh my god, it it was. I really can't stress this enough. It was delicious. Yeah, you know, it goes without saying that art and it was gorgeous. The way it was packaged was gorgeous. It came with like cute little D and D bits and bobs, like sticks did. and stuff like that, it which was, was really it cute. Was, truly truly there's a reason you've heard of many worlds tavern and and, and and it is great uh if you want to try some of their coffees and teas i of hey obviously you want to check out wayward wonders yeah but if you would actually like to check out their coffees and teas uh if you use our affiliate code pod blast pod all in capital letters at checkout you'll get 10 percent off of your order and honestly you'll also be supporting us by using yeah, our code uh it's the whole store it's not just the coffees and teas they have dice mats, they have travel mugs, they have pins, they have stickers, etc. If you know a D&D player, or honestly, anyone who loves good yeah. coffee, uh, now is really a great time. Save some money with our code. D&D and coffee go hand in hand. Yeah, tr truly. Go and truly. get a good Christmas gift, a hey, holiday gift. You'll know that we always we always talk about coffee here. Yeah. Like we, One of our whole skits for the launch of our Twitch, Twitch channel was, was a coffee, coffee shop, shop yeah. because we love coffee. Uh, but yeah, if you know someone uh, now, especially coming up to Christmas, it's a great time to treat them. Yeah. Uh, save 10% off with our code. And once again, thank you so, thank you so very much, much Many, Many Worlds Tavern. Tavern. Please check them out. Patreon.com forward slash Many Worlds Tavern for monthly D&D 5e homebrew basically and i would also like to say thank you so much to joe yes over at many worlds tavern who who's made this opportunity possible we yeah. really appreciate it thank you so much so go and check out all of that and just know you'll be supporting them you'll be supporting us absolutely uh you'll be supporting a great project as well yeah and fantastic uh, homebrew stuff absolutely and uh if you want us to do a deep dive into any of the actual content, let us know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could. Yeah. So thank you, Many Worlds Tavern. Thank you so thank much you for so that. Much. Very much appreciated. So with all of that, shall we get into today's topic? Yes. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. What have you gotten up to? What have you... Hey, what are you thinking? <laughs> hey, what's on your mind? Tell me what you're thinking about. I want to know. I Tell know. me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're feeling. Yeah. Has anyone watched the last season of our, the last three episodes of Arcane? <sighs> we, we haven't. We haven't at the time of recording this. I'm sure we will have at the time of... I don't know. Why well, don't I don't know. I don't you know, know what? I don't know. There's, there's a few things going on right now in yeah. our lives. And yeah. those few things are... World of Warcraft Classic. World of Warcraft Classic. And that's, that's it. So <laughs> our Saturday was yeah. spent. So we woke up. Yep. Here's what we did. Yep. We woke up. Yep. We had our cereal. Yep. We had our coffee downstairs. Yep. We went upstairs yep. and played World of Warcraft from 11 yep. in the morning yep. till half past one in the morning. Half past two in the morning. Half past one in the morning. Half past one in the morning? Half past one in the morning. Felt like half past two in the morning. It was half past one. I see. Well. You know, in between there, there was eating something. Yeah. Feeding the dog. Yeah. Taking her out for a walk and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. we did play. Yeah, we did. From 13 11. Hours. Yeah. 13 and a half hours. Yep. We did. Certainly. And you know what? We have not done that. Oh, I, 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 can't I can't even tell, tell you. you the last time we have, we had a chance to do anything like that. When was the last time we did that? We didn't even do that when Retail came out. No, we didn't. I don't think we even did it when Season of Discovery came out. I know we did hammer Season of Discovery. But not like that. But not like that. That was We haven't insane. had 
13 hours of unimpeded gaming time in our adult lives in honestly years. Years. It's been years and years and years and years. years. I can't remember the last time we sat down and did that. The only time I can think is maybe when we opened up the Discord server and we would hop yeah. in the voice chats. I think maybe we had a day like that where we played Valheim all day, maybe. Yeah. Because that, that that's the type of game that lends itself to doing that really well. You say the Valheim 1.0 is coming out? Yeah. What's, yeah. Is, I saw what? um I, a, a creator I follow who, who talks exclusively Valheim stuff posted something about it. I don't know. If you don't know, Valheim is a survival game, a survival crafting game. And, a um, Norse Viking survival a, crafting it's game. It's an incredible it's, game. It's a great it game. It is, my, in my opinion, the best survival it's game out there. It's the best survival game. I love the progression of it. I love I love anything that's stylized, and it's incredibly stylized. I love the theme of it. I love the way yeah. it looks. I love the way it feels. I love, I love the, the progression. System. Yeah, totally. It, fe- it feels so great. It's so good. Yeah, it feels great. And it's it's been a game that's been in early access for maybe what? seven years. I think it's, no, no, maybe five years. No, it's probably not. Twenty nineteen. Oh, maybe yeah, because it was in it was in, it was in COVID. It was in COVID that it came out. I think. Yeah, I think it came so out in twenty nineteen. So, so it's so it's been four or five years. It's yeah, been. yeah, it's been early access, and I, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't watched it. I, th- I think they're releasing a full, actual, proper one point oh. Wow, which is very exciting. That's I, big for I them. again, I would love to play Valheim again. It is better when you have more people. Yeah. Because me and you play very differently. Like, I like to stay at home and do the crops and <laughs> do the management. You need the two yeah, people. Yeah, but you like to go out and do everything. But it's hard for you to do that by yourself. And it's hard for me to do it by myself. Yeah. So you basically have to drag me out to do things with you. And then I have to force you to stay at home to, to organize things. <laughs> it works best when you're playing in a group. And uh, I just don't think we have people who would want to play it as so, much as we not as, right now yeah like I, I i just don't think you know the time we played it was an exceptional circumstance where we had a lot of people who really wanted to play the game yeah but uh, i don't think i don't think anyone we know is really that big on the game you know lynn's big on the game lynn's big on the game yeah yeah but hey she has a life yeah, how about that how about hey hey lynn how about you have a life <laughs> what the hell lynn stop <laughs> having so much of a what life what the hell uh, all yeah. of that to say I don't know. All I'd say, all I'd say, I don't know. Thirteen and a half hours of World of Warcraft. Yeah, yesterday. it felt Warcraft. so good. It was, if do you know what? It was. It, <sighs> I, my soul needed it. It was healing. My soul needed. Yeah. Exactly that. It needed totally. to sit. Like, what I would do. What I would do when I was a child. When you were a kid. I would wake up and I'd want to play World of Warcraft. Yeah, on I'd your weekend. Log on. Or your summer holidays. I play all day. Yep. And then I'd go to sleep. And, and then you do it again the next yeah. day. Sadly, I can't do that today. Yep. <laughs> yep. Un- unfortunately, life calls. Hey, but I could be doing worse things. You certainly. Oh, certainly. I could be doing worse things, but right now I'm recording a podcast. I got a stream tonight. Yeah, yeah. T- tonight, at the time of recording, it will have already happened by the time you see this. Yeah, we got Dave and Raina coming We got Dave Camp and Raina the, the day we're recording this, which is really, really fun. Excited Man, you know that. what? I've been, I'm so excited. I do this thing where up until the day, I, it's fine. The day comes, I'm really nervous. Don't be nervous. I, I'm suddenly really nervous. Don't I. Be nervous. I, I I, and you know what? I know it's for no reason. I think the second we got on the pre-call with them and we say hi, I think for me, I'm really worried that I'm not going to be able to get the assets and the layout sorted in time. We just, oh, well, you've got all the uh, yeah. the layout done, yeah. And we tested the cameras and we tested the microphones. Yeah. Fear of the unknown, my friends. It's just it was. It's simply just like putting their cameras into OBS. I know, That's I know, what you're worried about. I know, I am is, very worried about it. It's going to be fun. I know, That's I know. Fun. So again, you know what? It will have already happened by this time and I know it will it'll be an incredible great time. But um, I'm a, I'm a little nervous now. Don't be nervous. Uh, God, what I would do what I would to do. play World of Warcraft for 13 hours day after day after day after day. So good. I think I could as well. I think I could as well. I think I could. That is one game that I think I actually could. We should take a week off. Oh my God. We should take a week off. Take a week off. You're crazy. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I You're know. crazy. Yeah, I know. You're crazy. I, yeah, I know. But it's one of these things where... When you're self-employed, like we are, we we don't that we don't do the podcast and streaming full time yet. We have like our own small business that we we've had for years, and um, it's one of these things where when you take time off, you you don't get paid basically. No. Anytime you take off, you have to make sure that you're you know, what's the word? You're in a good position to do. Yeah, so. economically. Economically, yeah. That sounds that that seems like a weird financially. But that yeah yeah that you're financially accounted financially, for yeah, taking yeah, yeah. time off. Yeah. Yeah, and you know. 
that's it. It's like the thing is with being employed and taking time off is it feels good in the moment. Yeah. But the thing is, you you're basically just pushing back things. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> that you need to do. I know. So and it's is just... that feeling and I'm sure I'm sure everyone who when you take time off work, when you go back, you're like, man. What is going to be waiting for me? Yeah. <laughs> what is there going to be that I'm going to have to get back to when I get yeah. back to this? So it's the, it's the same for everyone, I fear. But we should we should we should we should take some time off. Yeah. Soon. Around Christmas we should take some time off for ourselves yeah. and and uh and play World of Warcraft for yeah. 13 hours day after day after day. I feel like that's a good challenge. Yeah, it's like the whole thing of like you're never going to get like when you're a kid, and I never played World of Warcraft as a kid. I started playing in 20, 20, 20, 2021. Yeah, you started playing in COVID, with not Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't have the nostalgia around WoW specifically, but my gosh, Neopets and Habbo Hotel, those were like the things I played yeah. as a kid. And I stayed up. There would be nights I stayed up on a school night, didn't go to sleep, went to school the next day. Why not? Like you will never get those days back when you like have the first like friends online and i mean this is the thing like we played for 13 and a half hours yesterday i got you know slightly less sleep because yeah. we went to sleep slightly later last night yeah and i'm like to be fair we, got, we still got a decent amount of sleep yeah. which, which was pretty good but you know i'm a little bit tired there if i just stayed up all night and tried to do this podcast on zero sleep yep i would it's die over. on set yeah over it's i over would die you. On camera in front of you. <laughs> is that what is that what you want? Is that what, are you not entertained? <laughs> are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so all of that to to be said. Hey, World of Warcraft, classic, great game. Two thousand and four. It it when I say classic, it, it's basically they've just rebooted the game from two thousand and four, the original, and they've just made fresh servers. So everyone's on the same boat. Yeah, There's everyone's... no economic bloat yet. No. There's no people ahead who have been hoarding wealth. Like it's a uh, it's 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 a great time to play. Yeah, it's, it's really really exciting to play, and uh, it's all the better for playing with friends. We're level seventeen. We're level seventeen. Yeah. We got the first day that we played. We only got like to level seven. Yeah. Uh, and then we logged on yesterday, and we got ten levels. Which, by the way, in classic WoW, is is ten huge to be honest. Levels. And uh, we're playing with a couple of people we haven't played before. So we're playing with Jordan, Jordan and Wabs. Wabs. Right, right. To be fair, Ratty P got to level ten last Jordan night. Jordan and Wabs are the people that we like, like the main people we, we always play, with. play classic with. Yeah, the discovery with them. As yeah, well. yeah. Uh, uh, Ratty P's, Ratty P's playing, joined. Who was who used to be one of our mods and is now one of our really good friends. Uh, Vince, Vince is one playing. of our wonderful mods, is playing. I think Adam's playing a little bit as well. I, I haven't seen Adam on yet, but yeah, I think yeah, he's playing. yeah, yeah. So we got we got a, we got a gang going. To be honest cool. with you, yeah, it's 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 always better with friends, isn't it? So much better with friends. Yeah, always better with friends. <sighs> I don't have anything else. We we've done we've done nothing. We've done nout. Literally all day yesterday. We've done nout apart from World of well. Warcraft. And it was so. and it felt God. It was. It was great. It, it was, was I it was, needed that. It was a great day. It was a, a day a day for the history books. Yeah, for the history books. Yeah, yeah. Uh and I, I guess <laughs> I guess with that, shall we just shall we get into it? Let's do it. Before we do get into it, though, make sure you comment, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell. All of those things go a million miles to help the channel. Thank you so much for always doing it. But don't forget, you should do it every video because it really helps us if you want to help the channel. If you want, go and check out our merch, www.lgpodblast.co.uk. Our Pride Collection has launched, uh, which means that 10% of the Pride Collection, the t-shirts and the hoodies, 10% of all sales from there will be going to an LGBTQIA plus charity in the local northeast area to us, Heart Gables. So if you want to pick up some normal t-shirts or pick up something from the Pride Collection for Christmas, for yourself, for a loved one, please feel Merry free to do so. Merry Chrysler. Merry Christmas. Gosh, is it December by the time this video goes out? What's, Surely what's, not. What's the date today? It's the 24th. Gosh, it's no, nearly. It's the 28th. It would, be, it would be days after this. Bloody hell. Uh, come join us on Twitch every Friday, every Sunday, every other Tuesday. We do all sorts of great things. We do advice. We do ask us anything. We do... God. All sorts of great fun stuff and it's a good time. So come hang out with us there and also check our Patreon out down in the description if you want more exclusive content 
from me and Margaret. Thank you so much to all our patrons over at Patreon. You have no idea how much we appreciate your support. If you want to support us over at Patreon and gain access to our exclusive content, like our D&D campaign updates and our extra monthly live streams, click the link in the description. More about Patreon at the end of this video. Thank you. Yay! All right, today we're doing some advice. Bom, 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 Gosh, bom, bom. it feels like An so long, so long since we've done advice. A literal eternity. To be fair, we do it advice every week no matter what on twitch on stream, right yeah but like god it feels like forever since, since we've done, done it on advice. the podcast yeah. yeah it really does I, I i we've been doing other things to be fair yeah um so yeah it's it's nice to get nice to get back down to advice to yeah, be honest yeah, with you so these these are all submissions. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Uh, if you have any D and D advice questions you would like to ask us uh, and the community chimes in as well, uh, send them into the submission form down below. We also answer them live on Twitch. Yeah. You get more of like an immersive experience when we're answering because we can talk to we you, can talk to you, and you chat can, gets involved. We can ask deeper questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but check the submission form down below, and if you have any other things like horror stories am i the assholes and popular opinions send them in as well yeah, we, we do, do those videos all the time so this first one this has been sent in by anonymous and they use they them pronouns thank you very much anonymous hello love the podcast and i'm a new gm who has been struggling to get their players to buy in more to the story and actually collaborate together i could definitely use some advice to summarize i have four players we know each other well but i cannot seem to get them to actually collaborate in game or actually even buy into it they all go based on the well this is what my character would do type of mentality some examples. One character is a serial runner. They always run from situations that might potentially end in combat or get a little bit more darker in theme of the story, which was discussed and okayed in session zero. It got to the point where I had to improvise a way to lock them inside an area and they couldn't escape. Otherwise, they would have missed a hugely crucial plot point, which was meeting the BBEG for the first time. My players also have the habit... So Wow, that noise I made with my mouth just then. Sorry about that. I didn't even hear you make a noise. It was a it was a big old slurp. <laughs> My players have also my players also have the habit of not talking to each other in character and consistently splitting up. So I have to juggle back and forth between all of them. I try to give them different situations that would call for collaboration, for example, sending them to a ball where they had to steal an item, but they still found a way to split up and not collaborate on how to get the item. They do not take notes or remember anything. I've previous I've taken previous advice to be as explicit as possible with my hints to the point where i've point blank told them you see the markings on the creature which is a near exact replica of what you saw when you met this mysterious person the bbeg oh my god and they still do not connect the dots okay. because they do not remember or write it down and finally currently i am now facing a situation where they don't seem to enjoy combat no matter how descriptive and fun I try to make them with weird creative monsters. So I wanted to give them a fun break that will still allow them to find clues regarding the plot with a festival, but they've split up yet again and are not talking to any of the townsfolk and the runner player has decided to not partake in the festival at all and sit alone. I've tried talking to them regarding this, that they should participate because while this is more fun, there are still things to do and nothing I do is pointless. And they just told me, sure, next session, just have my companion run into the festival and I will run after it. I'm frustrated that I have to find ways to force them into buying into my story. I hope this wasn't too long. I'm simply just lost at how I can get them to actually play as a party and buy into the story more and interact with the world more. Thank you for reading. Okay. <clears throat> so the thing is, I think I could, I could give you an individual fix for every single one of these problems, but I think what you do need to do is, is need to have an out-of-game sit-down conversation Certainly. about everything because i think there's a few things wrong here i will say that one thing that i do like to do with maybe people who are runners um because we've had we've had somebody who was a runner before uh it wasn't when i was a dungeon master but it was really frustrating for us as players um but i would honestly say like maybe one time there's let's just say there's a beloved npc with them or something like that and this person runs and you can you can it doesn't have to be this brutal or this harsh but you know 
maybe that NPC dies. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, we could have really done with you there, mm-hmm. but like you keep running. Mm-hmm. And if you keep running, like this will keep happening. We'll keep losing. We'll keep, you know, like losing out on people, losing out on uh, like winning and things like that. Mm-hmm. We need you to stick with the group. Yeah. Maybe we can give them a something of invisibility. Yeah. So instead of running, they can still be present, but they can disappear if they want to. Mm-hmm. And that's obviously what they want. They want to disappear uh, sort of thing. But I think you need to have a conversation out of the game. Yeah, about this, I, I uh, agree. Especially about this splitting up thing. Yeah, like, and, and, and it's hard because you, it, you, you've already had a session zero. So uh, the thing is... Session, th- session zero is fine. Yeah. But you can't go over every inevitable thing. Totally. That, that's going to go a cap totally. in the game in the session zero. Totally. You can you can cast a wide net, and you know cover a lot of subjects. Yeah. But when you get into game, things are going to inevitably crop Come up, up that, that you that didn't you, that you could have never foreseen. That you could have never have expected. Yeah. Oh, so, did I just kick you? Was that you? Yeah, it's okay. Oh my gosh. So I think you need to talk about this the splitting up thing, and yeah, I also totally. need like I don't think some parties get how valuable information is until you show them how how valuable information is yeah they might not get the taking notes or remembering people's names or remembering patterns or remembering like the name of the spell or anything like that how important it is until you show them what happens when they don't yeah 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 they get another thing as a dungeon master like the the bbeg or just simply the enemy gets the one up yeah they've won this time yeah because they they haven't paid attention and they haven't seen and you know that there's a fine line between there's a there's a fine line between well i don't think no i don't even think that's relevant i was gonna say there is a fine line between blindsiding your players and actually giving them a surprise but again if this is something that you've said you've had to talk to them multiple times about and you've had to say like hey look you need to pay attention you need to take notes yeah. like th- this is happening and i've given you the clues and then i'm still not getting it maybe they do need to actually see like a real-time example of yeah. of why of they, why they need to pay attention not even take notes because listen note taking genuinely is a skill that's and mm. it's it's it, you need a specific type of player. certainly yes yeah, certainly like, you know i would say margaret is the only real note taker at my table yeah. Abby takes notes but they're not like abby takes notes <laughs> oh, well, abby takes notes of big important things yeah abby something big happens details. she will make a note an npc tells us something she will take a note yeah i'm the type of person where i i take notes of everything yeah you do as well. I, I cast a wide everything. net and yeah, i hope that i can just get something in it yeah, you know yeah. and you abby's far more concise than i yeah. am but the thing is i think you know with the detail that i try and go into in my campaign and like those small details yeah, yeah. like it is worth doing but, and i think that's why you do it and i do it because i i really enjoy it and you enjoy i it. love taking notes yeah. it's a joy for me like it's it's not a chore for me i like doing it i like looking over my notes at the end of the session and going over them i realize that 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 is not for everyone mm-hmm. like some people just want to play the game and they don't want to have to do homework about it mm-hmm. like i totally totally get it but there's a difference between not taking notes and not, not, not remembering at yeah not listening and not remembering things who was it travis travis from Ca- C- critical role doesn't take any notes remembers everything yeah but the thing that's just because he has a deep interest yeah in the story. of course yeah of course and, and that's the thing it's like I, I, yeah he's realized over the years that when he pays attention like that's, matt will bring it back around that's it and I, you know i i don't want to speculate or assume but part of me can't help but think is this a lack of interest yeah is this maybe. a lack of interest is this a lack of understanding of everyone's expectations is this a lack of experience maybe you, you haven't said whether the your players are you say you're a new gm i have no idea if your players are new maybe this is a lack of experience yeah. thing but i think jack's right i think this has to be an out of out of game conversation get everyone together i don't know if you play face to face i don't know if you play online get everyone together outside of D or just before the session and just sit down and say hey guys i've talked to you about a few of these things before but it's getting to a point where i'm starting to get really frustrated and i'm starting to i, I don't know where to turn so i'm talking to you guys so we can all work on this together hey you guys you split up all the time yeah. this is so hard for me as a dm and i think you tell them that like 
it's it's totally fine to want to yeah. have multiple things to do. Of hey, we want to go to the ball. We want to go up to the bar and speak to this person. We want to go and dance with this person. We want to go and check upstairs. We want to check the cellar. It's just like, okay. So the thing is, we don't need to split up to do that. Yeah, totally. Let's just do it all together. Yeah, absolutely. One task at a time. Yeah. I'm not going to make you run out of time. I'm not going to make like things happen in the background because you aren't doing it fast enough. Yeah, yeah. But keeping Definitely. together in case something happens is really important. And I think an important thing to ask is, why do you always split up? Why do you split up? Get to the root of like why why do you guys like to split up so much? Oh, because it's efficient. It's just like it's it's not. Well, it's it might, it it's might the be exact efficient. opposite of efficient. In game time. But it's not like, efficient in real life. But in real life it's it slows everything down. Absolutely. To a crawl. Game time and real life are two very different yeah. things. And if it's oh well, you know, I like I like to have my own part of the story. I like to have my own moments with my character. You can still have that. Yeah together in a party i'll give you that i, will, like, I promise i, I will promise give you, you that. i'll give you like Definitely. your moment to shine in every session and you know Definitely. we'll focus on your story at times yeah. and stuff like oh, that i'm worried the party aren't going to be interested in what i'm doing so i'm going to do it by myself well hey look we they have to we, sit there we have to sit here anyway. anyway so you might as well all do it together and yeah. use these moments as a bonding thing use these moments to have conversations with each other as you're and going the thing through is, do you want to know what i didn't even realize but if they're fucking splitting up and let's just say there's a... I don't know how big your party is, but it's a party of four. four. Okay. Two people do this thing. Two people do that. Two people do this thing. One person does that. The runner's sat on their own. Yeah. Okay. The two people do something. The other two might not even be listening. They don't get the key information. Boom. We Now we understand why they aren't paid. Yeah. Those two people who complete their task. Now this one person goes and does their task. They find out a bit of key information. The two people from before aren't listening and the runner's still not listening. Yeah. That's three people at the table who didn't remember that key information. Yeah. And let's talk about the runner, I guess, because it is so hard, especially as a new DM, who balancing combat is one of the hardest things to do in the game. In my opinion, one of the hardest things to do in the game, right? When you're accounting for having four players going into a fight, you even say here, meeting the BBEG for the first... Uh, to be fair, I don't know if that's a combat. But, you know, they run away from combats. They run away when things, to be fair, get a little darker, but they tend to avoid situations. And you even say they sit alone by themselves all the time. With the runner, when you're accounting for four people in combat and you only have three... That's really hard to manage. And then it just takes so much longer. With a runner, I would genuinely just say, look, I understand that this is what your character would do. But when you're constantly taking yourself out <clears throat> of the, the, game. The, the game, like it puts an obligation on me as the DM to have to try and include you. The other day, I said, you should get involved. And you said, yeah, well, you can get my companion to come in. I shouldn't have to be making excuses for you to get involved in the game. What's what I always said uh, when when I was new, or if I take on any new players, or if I like meet any new players and they ask me what's what's something that I should know. As a player, the most important thing, bar none, full stop, is you, not me as the dungeon master. You as the player, you need to find the reason to stick around. D- definitely, because if you don't have a reason to stick around you'll be the runner. Mm-hmm. You'll go home. You'll just sit in the tavern because adventuring is scary. Yeah. And you're going to get into a lot of dangerous situations. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. You're going to get yourself in a lot of like situations where your character might die. Yeah. Like you've got to find a reason. Your character needs a reason Yeah. that they don't just took tail and run home. Because it, in, in the kindest way I can say it, it is incredibly frustrating for everyone to have yeah. to beg a character to stay around. To have to take, because again, time is finite. Again, game time, whatever. Re- in real lifetime, we have a certain amount of time to play D and D. However, four or five often, hours a week. However Every often we play later. it, exactly. And I, I, again, I maybe I'm only speaking for myself here. But to have to constantly turn around to someone and beg them every time to stay with us, it gets to a point where that turns simply into, "Well, fuck you then. Don't yeah. don't come." Like I'm I'm not gonna spend my time begging you. Begging to come. you, begging like, you. You you, sh- you should have worked that out we, yourself. Us three want to go. Why don't you? Like your ha- yeah, your having character, to have a debate with someone every time. Every time, and like we've talked about this. Like Matthew's a great player. He's still at our table. Fantastic role player. Great stuff. The first character he played at my table, he took this 
sort of thing yeah. a little too far. Yeah. And, and all it took genuinely was, all it took was a conversation just going, "Hey, it's getting really difficult every single time we have a plan uh to have an opposition to the yeah. plan and having to coax you into it." Like we were aware you're totally doing it in character, yeah, but it's as a, it's players, all a character thing. As players it's getting frustrating. Yeah. Do you think you could work with us more? Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. He was like, to be fair, he was like, I actually had this plan in my character yeah. arc to have my character get more courageous as we go through. Yeah. I had it planned out. And I think that's an example of sometimes you can have an idea for something in game and then it just changes. Yeah, and it maybe just doesn't it and it maybe just doesn't pan out the way you think it yeah. does. Yeah. Or maybe it goes on a little too long. Yeah. And, and it, I really cannot stress enough. It was simply one conversation absolutely completely solved everything. Yeah, and I think you just need to speak to this player and, you know, say exactly that. You need to, like, have the reason. You yeah. need to fast track. If, if 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 it's this whole thing, like, along the way, they're going to get more brave. Totally. Then, okay, that's fine. They need to start getting brave now yeah, because like, it, it's going on too long. It's, it's not my job as the DM. I have so many other things. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would love to. I would love to be able to try and find a reason every time for your character to get involved, but I can't. I'm, I'm too busy managing four other people's characters and managing my characters and the story. Mm. It's, it's, I can't do it, so you have to take that now. And I'm trusting you to get yeah. yourself involved because yeah. we need you. Yeah, we need you. We need you. And again, ask why. Yeah. And What's why, the reason? Like, why, I understand that it's scary, but it's like, you're an adventurer. Yeah. Like, it will be scary. Yeah. So it's like, you can still be scared but still be involved. Like, role-play how scared you are, but you don't run away. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, again, maybe we can have something where you're invisible, where you can, like, turn invisible once Totally, day, like yeah, that, totally. To keep you in the fray. Yeah, absolutely. But maybe out of sight or something to like yeah, that. Yeah, completely. And then the last thing, the combat. So yeah. I So sometimes, I don't know. Look, so I don't know. I don't know what it is about your combats mm. that they're maybe not super engaged with. To me, a lot of the times are, I get, I get, unengaged i disengage from combats when i realize that they aren't dangerous mm. this is just me so you know take this with a pinch of salt mm. if you've tried to create fun monsters and you've put in third objectives yeah 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 like yeah, different yeah. things like we've got to get this gate down before the monster escapes we've got to pick up the gem and leave before the building falls down we've got to rescue the npcs without them dying and stuff like that third objectives are great but sometimes we overcomplicate it. Sometimes we spend too much time creating fun, interesting monsters mm. when all we actually really need to do, controversial opinion here, is knock somebody unconscious. Yeah, yeah, honestly. And yeah. then it's like, okay, now we got to think. N now, yeah, yeah. Now I actually have to, it's like the 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 glitter clown that, you Yay! know, squirts like things. Yay! It's just Yay! like, it's just like th that's all well and good and I love and don't stop being creative. But sometimes we lose sight of we're in a fight. Oh, yeah, challenge them a little bit. Yeah, challenge, and challenge them. them. And, and again, them. you know, it's hard to say without an exact example. Yeah. But I think to round all of this off, as well as that, let's say you have this conversation. You get to the bottom. You ask them, hey, why do you keep splitting up? It's detrimental to me because of this. Can we stop doing it because of this? Uh, hey, runner, why do you keep running away? It, you can't keep asking me to do this for you because of X, Y, Z. You go, hey, what is it about combat that you're not enjoying? Stars and Wishes could be a great one Stars and Wishes this. is probably a great thing for you. Absolutely. If you don't know what Stars and Wishes are, at the end of every session, each player gives to the DM, either publicly or privately, a star, which is something they loved about that yeah. session, and a wish, something they wish they could see more of. Yeah. It's a great, constructive, positive way to get information from your players when it sounds like you don't really know exactly what you they want maybe right all now. on different pages. But I think all, if all of that is done and nothing changes, it's also okay to maybe realize that these might not be the right type of players for your type of game we always say it, it's like your first because this is your first time dm yes well i i, I anonymous they have said that they're a new dm it's, yeah it's okay that you might have played together but like you can be a player in someone's game and then dungeon master for the same table but them not give you what you want as a dungeon master yeah you might need a different set of players as a dungeon master yeah. to fit at the right table. Totally. Doesn't mean you can't still play with them. Oh no, totally. Uh, absolutely. Some, uh, with uh, somebody else as a dungeon yeah, master. Yeah, absolutely. But you as a dungeon master might need Might just be different. Might yeah. just might just need a different set of players and yeah. there's not and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing to be ashamed about that. 
doesn't mean you don't like them. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you think they're bad. They might just not be the right fit. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, you know that is only something if you've had all these conversations because they have to. It has to be had. You can't. You can't do anything about something if you don't know. There's Absolutely. A problem. You know that that player going. Yeah, sure. Just get my pet to run in. They might not realize how much of an onus it is on you yeah, to do it. It's, you know. It's your job. Yeah. It's not absolutely. my job. You and, have and my. They, it's just like they you just need might to not do that. know it. Yeah. You know. Uh, have the conversation anonymous. And if if none of it, nothing changes after the fact, then give it time. You know, changes change takes a while and it's yeah. hard. But um, if not, do consider the fact that you might just not be gelling right, and that's yeah, okay as that's well. Fine. That's yeah. totally fine. I hope that helps, anonymous. I hope that helps. Anonymous. Keep us updated. I would I would love to hear more about how that went. Uh, all right, this next one. This has been sent in by anonymous, and she uses she her pronouns. Thank you very much, anonymous. The title is. My pet Albert died in our game and I don't know how to play my character anymore. I've been in a campaign with my friends for the past year and a half and it has been amazing. My character is a Goliath barbarian who is really sweet and girly and one of the things I wanted from her from day one was an animal best friend. So fair. Early in the campaign, I freed an Albert from captivity and he has really become part of the party and one of my favourite parts of the game. At one point, all our characters pitched in to buy him armour and the DM said that he even learned to rage from me and gave him some barbarian class features. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Our most recent session was one of the most difficult combats we have ever faced and ended with my Albert dying and us failing at everything we tried to get him back. Our DM has said from the beginning that death is very possible in this campaign and he wants the world to have real stakes and consequences, which I totally understand. Despite this, I feel sick to my stomach when I think about playing the rest of this campaign. I really love playing my upbeat, happy-go-lucky character, and the thought of trying to playing her, play her grieving her best friend makes me want to throw up. I could enjoy maybe going on a revenge arc, but that is not possible here, as I have already killed the monster that did this before I even understood what had happened. I've been wrecking my brain, but I just can't think of a way to play my character after this, that doesn't fill me with dread. I would have even preferred my character to die than having to roleplay a depression art like this. I am also conscious that the fact that my grandpa is most likely going to pass away in the next few weeks, and I really do not want to have to roleplay as a grieving character when I'm grieving in real life. I'm meeting with my DM to talk before our next session, but this is my first time playing D&D, and I honestly don't even know what to ask from him. Is it disrespectful to ask my DM to undo the first major character death we've had in this campaign? Can I ask for my character to die here too, even though the danger has already passed? How can I honour the stakes that my DM wants to establish in the world while still playing a character that I'm excited about? Oh my fucking god. Right. Oh, anonymous, I'm sorry. This, this... This is... Do you want to know what? The, like... The respect that you're showing your dungeon master as well is actually insane. Certainly, like, certainly. But I, I have to say, as a dungeon master, as a dungeon master, like, hear this from me of all people because I've basically been in this situation, and I wanted to have my players understand that death was a very real thing. I made sure that they understood, like, if you die, like, you know, we might be able to bring you back. Might be able to go on a Renette, like a, an, an act to bring you back and stuff like that, but you know, death is a very real possibility. And the first campaign, luckily, nobody died. Uh, but the second campaign, we did have a character death, mm-hmm, and it was mm-hmm. Abby's character. It was TRP, yeah. And Abby died one time, yeah, uh, and we brought her back successfully. Yes, yeah. And then the second time, she died. And I ended the session there, and we were going to roll for her revivify at the beginning of the next session. And the whole week, you know, Abby came to me and she was like, "Hey, uh, you know." Like talking to me about what she wants to happen, like, uh, like basically battering with me, like, hey, can my character not die and mm-hmm. stuff like that? And I was just sat there, like, I, I, I think I... I think it's important to note that this was three sessions before the end of the entire campaign. Yeah, but I think that doesn't. I don't think that matters. Yeah, I, t- I, yeah. It does matter, but it doesn't matter with the point I'm going to make. Yeah. So I came to you and i was like man abby doesn't want a character to die but i told you guys that death's like super real and mm. you just said to me you said to me why mm-hmm. like why like death is real mm. like you know she's going through that right now this week mm-hmm. we've all like understood the stakes mm-hmm. we're all devastated if she doesn't come back 
like it's going to be devastating yeah like you've made it real yeah like a death has achieved exactly what it's supposed to we're yeah. all emotionally invested yeah we all know the risks yeah and i was like huh maybe <laughs> you're right maybe i don't need to be like i've done my job yeah like there's weight there's yeah. emotional investment yeah and then we come to the session she fails and she dies and yeah. then i have and it's 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 devastating it's beyond, it's beyond devastating long story short she's trying to cure vampires of vampirism there's one npc that embodies that completely yeah and he and her end game was to go around with him curing people curing vampires or killing them yeah or kill- <laughs> yeah basically. curing them or killing them yeah, yeah. and uh <clears throat> he switched places with her yeah. as a narrative thing and that was a big loss for her. Like she'd come all this way and he was the shining example of that mm. and he died mm. and it still had weight. So I don't think going to your dungeon master is disrespectful at all. No, no, gosh, no. I think you explain the situation. Totally. You're in a very unique situation with you your are. grandpa and stuff you like are. that. You're and I'm in very a, sorry about that. You're in a situation where something like this it right now for you is very damaging. And I think you need to tell your dungeon master that. Absolutely. And you know, like the thing is it sounds like your dm very much let you try right yeah. there, it sounds like you know we tried everything and it, we still failed so your dm was willing to try and, and and let you bring your albert back right i think this is a case of your dm probably just doesn't know right how how it's affecting you exactly and i think when your dm does know they will want to help you yeah right and the thing is like your dungeon master's done the job yeah like they've got you emotionally invested. Some people don't need it to be emotionally invested. Some people don't need the threat of death to be emotionally the, invested. Me. But like it's done its job. Like yeah. you're emotionally invested. You, you felt the feelings. You understood yeah. what was on the line. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. That. But now at the, this point, it's gonna take fun away from it, and that's where we have to draw the line. Yeah, I completely if agree. If it's gonna make you have less fun that your hour bear can't come back, then I think. I think that would be the wrong decision from the dungeon master, in Com- my opinion. Yeah, I, completely. I don't know if there's something that we can do where, like, okay, the the owl bear's gone, but maybe the spirit lives on. Yes. Yeah. Com- yeah. Totally. Like the power, the power of love. Yeah. Uh, between you, there's just an unbreakable bond. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the owl bear's here or not. Like the spirit lives on, and it works exactly the same. Yeah. But yeah, it has a bunch of hit points. But like, if it gets reduced to zero. You gotta have a long rest before you can summon it again, or something like that. Yeah, as the spirit. Yeah. Um, I think it would be really cool. Yeah, you know, it could be something where I don't know if you've left off literally where your Alba has died. Sessions ended. You say you're going back, and this is going to be the first session since Alba has died. I don't know if it's maybe you've kept you've kept the Alba to to bury them or something like that, and an NPC is like. I think I might know someone who can help you, you know? Yeah, something like that. It's like S- something like in that. a game where anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, totally. And if we draw the line there for our player who's absolutely devastated, yeah. then we're not doing enough, yeah, in and, my opinion. And it's also, by the way, it is okay to be this connected and oh this invested in your character's pet. And it's it's okay to feel like this. You're not doing anyone injustice. No. Like the 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 justice is the fact that you care this much. Ab- absolutely. Like, I I completely agree. As a dungeon master, this dungeon master has done their job. Yeah, totally. They, they, yeah. Like the fact that you care this much, you've done your job, they've done their job. The fact that you care this much about your owl bear. Yeah. And the fact that they've died is all any dungeon master could ever want from a game. Uh, absolutely. And at all. I, I completely agree. And I, I think there is a couple of ways to go about this conversation, Anonymous, because I think no matter what, you should absolutely have this conversation with your you DM. You need to have this right? conversation. There's a couple of things. I think, Anonymous, the first thing you need to think for yourself personally is what is the best outcome for you here? Yeah. Because and what would you, I be happy with? You have a couple of options, honestly. you It sounds like you're open to all of these options. Um, you have, can they undo the first major death? Could I ask for my character to die here too, right? You have a couple of options. I would honestly think about which one you would prefer. I think with with the character dying, it it's so tough because I understand that like you don't want to run them through this depression arc, but you also can't play them as this happy go lucky character and stuff like that when they when the pets just died. I get it. But I think I think maybe 
in a month, two months, three months, four months, five months, something like mm, that, mm. I think you might regret yeah. giving like, up the character. Maybe you could just retire the character maybe for a little while. Maybe they go on a break. Exactly. Maybe to they, deal with it. Exactly. They go on a break. You bring in a new character. You get that kind of breath of fresh air, right? You you can put aside those feelings and that character for a little while. Take Scanlan from Campaign 1. Yeah. Like, you know, like he went through a lot. Yeah. And then he wanted to, you know, like actually secure a relationship with his daughter. Mm. So Scanlan took an extended break from the campaign. Yeah. He brought in... What was his name? Terry and Darrington. Terry and Darrington. Yeah. And it was hilarious, but Scanlan came back. Yeah. Like, Scanlan did what he needed to do. He, you know, got his stuff sorted. And then he came back. It's like, you can do that. Yeah. A breath of fresh air. Take a break from it. That's a really, um, that's a really good suggestion. Oh, that, well, thank that, you. <laughs> that's a really good suggestion. Uh, and I, I think ultimately... Maybe they, maybe they come back with a new pet. Oh. Maybe they go to an owlbear sanctuary and, and get and a new owlbear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they take the time to grieve yeah. or something like that and then come back with a... Yeah. That, that sounds sick. That sounds <laughs> but, sick. But again, anonym, anonymous. T- totally, totally it's up totally to your up discretion to you. what you think. But I also think, you know, it doesn't have to be a case of undoing the first death, yeah. right? There can still be things that go on. An NPC is able to bring them back. They come back in spirit form. You yeah. now have like a, a, a spirit familiar yeah. who is your owlbear. Yeah. You know, there's so many ways you can do it. But I think most importantly, you go to your DM and you, you say, hey, look, I need to talk to you about this because it's affecting me in all of these different ways. And honestly, I, I, I would also say, you know, there's out external factors as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you don't, I, if I, you're I, not I, comfortable going into it, just say there's external yeah. factors right now that would really affect me going into this. And I don't want to disrespect you. And I, I, I really yeah. respect you as my DM. And, and that's why I'm trying to bring it to you in yeah. this, like, this, this manner. Yeah, but this is going to be really bad for me. These are the options that I'm thinking of. Please, can you work with me here for something that we're both happy with? And I really, really would love to think, you say everything's going great. It's been amazing. These are your friends you've been playing with for a year and a half. Your DM's going to understand and your DM's going to want to help you. I think so. I think so. I think so. You, anyone would. Any friend would. Any friend would. Yeah, I think, I think when, like when you take all of these like out of game things into consideration, mm-hmm. like uh, to me, I think I think you know I've come a long way as a dungeon master, mm. and I now realize that like this game's supposed to be fun, full stop. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, we can get sad along the way. Yeah, we can get emotionally invested along the way. But the moment that we stop having fun, yeah, it's it's literally pointless. It is pointless. It's like, what's the point in turning up? Yeah, it is pointless. It's like I turn up every week to hang out with my mates, have a good time. Like yeah, we can cry. Yeah, we can laugh. Yeah, we can be shocked and appalled and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we got to still be having fun. Completely. And the moment we stop having fun. Is the moment that we stop enjoying the game. I I completely mm-hmm. agree. I'm sorry, anonymous. I'm I'm so, I'm sorry for everything. This is this is a really hard situation 100%. to be in. Yeah. And uh, sending you lots of love. Yeah, big please, love. Ha- please have the conversation with your yeah, DM, yeah. anonymous. Big time, yeah. Uh, you'll be able to come to something together that you're happy with. I I, agree. I, 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 I promise. completely agree. They probably sh- probably so didn't ways. realize they how probably, much. And I think that's the thing. I think yeah. when they realize, yeah. Uh, sort of what what's going on in your life and stuff like that, totally. and how much it means to you. Totally. I think they'll do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, all right. This next one. This has been sent in by Adelina and she uses she, her pronouns. Thank you very much, Adelina. That was my mum's name. Oh, nice. Beautiful name. Uh, my DM wants to start doing a podcast. He keeps acting like I'm not interested in doing it, but I am. And I was actually excited to do it. He is kind of strict about character creation at times. And originally I found it frustrating to have to pick a specific background for my characters I create but I understood why and I would just deal with it. However, since the past, since since the start of the podcast is coming up, he decided we should have specific personalities he came up with based on popular show characters. He gave class suggestions to go with these personalities, but they are not a requirement. When I got upset about it, he got frustrated and stated that he researched and feels that these personalities are what makes a great cast of characters and will make a cohesive group. There are other issues like not understanding how death save work and wanting to make it easier for characters to die as that is how D&D used to be. I feel like I'm creating a character's personality and it should be up to the player. Otherwise, you don't really care about the characters. I don't know how to handle this other than just to make a character that I don't care about. And once they die, I will drop out of the podcast or should I just drop out altogether? So it's it's an actual player. Yes. Not a podcast. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
Uh oh my god. Yeah, okay. and you know what? I think I, I wanted to include this one because it's it's a very niche thing that yeah. I think you know we we you know we don't do an actual play, but we have some experience with. I mean, we've we've well, we have a we've podcast. Actually lol, played on the internet, and we have actually played on the <laughs> internet. And uh, but I I think honestly. The issues are not necessarily just the podcast. I don't think these are podcast issues. I think these I think issues these are, are, these are like a difference in DM and player. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the thing is, most people aren't going to enjoy that. Like ninety nine percent of people who want to play D anD D aren't going to enjoy the dungeon master giving them a personality. Yeah, giving them, hey, this is who you're playing. This is what you're like. It's like that's on the that's on the character yeah and i think that's what makes a cast great it yeah. is 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 that however i do understand i understand the there's archetypes to every character that we see in, in media and in games and in, in tv shows uh and certain archetypes there's always a couple of each i would say and certain archetypes work better with one another and having a, a vast array of these archetypes works well but I feel like that's an organic thing that comes about just through playing and yeah. just through knowing each other and just through character development. Yeah, and the thing is, I honestly think like having a desire to play who you're playing mm. is such a humongous drive as to why you play the character <laughs> you do. Why else would you play a character? Like, yeah, it's just like I watched a popular media thing and yeah. now I'm really invested. Like. I watched uh, Arcane, yeah, and now I want to play a really edgy fucking monk that punches shit. It's yeah. like I want to play Vi. Yeah, it's like I, I, I see the character. I think I do it justice. I have a reason. Yeah, I've thought of a cool backstory, but it's like if I really wanted to play Vi, and then the DM gives me Jinx. Yes, it's like but that's just, that's not my. I don't have a desire. I, I, I completely don't have a, agree. Like a yearning desire to do that, and yeah. I, that means I probably won't give it justice. Yeah, and the thing is, I'll probably end up just playing vi yeah when you've given me jinx yeah and and i think as well it would be different if you could pick like if it was a case of the dm was like right i want to have these archetypes in i, I say archetypes i mean personalities I'm, i i want to have this array of personalities in here's all of them out on the table which one would you like you know i think that would be different mm -hmm. i honestly think that would be different <laughs> but if your dm is just going to you going yeah you're playing the jester now listen i <laughs> Could, it could never be me. And the thing is, like, where our characters begin and where our characters end. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, They're not, one, it's not the same. It's like, by the end of the campaign, you've seen some shit. You've oh, been through some shit. Totally. Like, good or bad. Good or bad. And the thing is, it's like, you aren't going to be the same character that you played Pat again. him. Pat him. Thank you. You aren't going to be the same character that you played at the end of the game. So, like, those archetypes aren't going to last. Yeah. Like, you can't just be the funny funny he -he silly, goofy guy one. all the time yeah. because usually the funny silly goofy one deep down inside hey hey not the brave not the brave yeah there you go like super funny super fucking caricature yeah super not sustainable yeah. because it wasn't sustainable totally. the whole point was not the brave had things that they were hiding yeah and deep down inside there was actually something that happened mm. and it was really sad and, and, the, was... and those moments that when sam got serious with not it was it was like <laughs> whoa whoa we all whoa. remember i think we'll all remember the you know like there's this whole like father, father yeah, he's child, my boy and he's my boy he's my boy and everyone was sort of like whoa damn whoa like, i remember watching that and being like whoa. you just didn't expect it no and you know I think it, it's such a disservice to honestly be like, yeah, you're this personality and, the, and, and it's nothing deeper than that. And, I, I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's what this DM has done to, here, to yeah. be honest. We, we, we just don't know, right? We just don't know. But I, I think, Adelina, you're asking like, do I just play it, then no. drop out once they die? Why would you waste your time I think, like that? I think you need to make your stand and be like, hey, if, you go, if I'm going to play on this on this uh actual player i need to play a character i care about otherwise i'm not going to be able to care totally and it's not because you're giving me a bad character yeah it's just i don't care about which the character. is so valid by the way the most why why would you why what would I you don't get is like you wouldn't do this at your home game no so why are you doing this when you're putting it yeah. online it's I, just like I, it, it's put i your get best it foot forward i get it. it it's it's you know especially when you have an analytical mind you can take a look and see what's popular and go Oh, okay. They all have these things in common. Like, hey, let's try emulate it. But I, I think, um, and I think, by the way, faking it till you make it is a huge part of all of this. 
but I, I think there has to be authenticity in it. And I'm not saying you can't be authentic when you're coming up with personalities, because of course you can. Yeah, but I, I but think I, creativity flourishes in chaos. And the thing is, is like, yeah, you. The whole thing is, yeah, you might start there, but it, uh, D&D is about the journey. D&D is about what happens in the game, where you go, like what what happens to your character. It's like, yeah, you might be that for the first two, three, four sessions, yeah. but that'll quickly change yeah. as you get to know the people and stuff like that. So I think go to your Dungeon Master, tell them the real crack, tell them... Totally. Like, send them this. To to yeah, and, totally, yeah. And show them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Adelina... At the end of the day, if if you're getting these bad vibes from it now, you know the th the thing like he keeps acting like I'm not interested, but but I am. In I'm not saying this is what's happening. In my experience, when something like this has happened to me and people are really downplaying it, it's because they don't want me to be involved. Yeah. But they don't want to tell me face to face. Just, and I am not saying that that's yeah, what your DM is doing just, here. Maybe just ask them properly. Yeah, it's 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 hard when you're enthused. But someone is downplaying your enthusiasm. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's a difficult situation to be in, and if you're feeling these red flags now, it's so much easier before you get into it to walk away than once you're actually in it to then go ooh and and then leave. Um, I think really look at these things. Really think how much of a game breaker these are for you. Talk to your DM if you want to, and see if they would be willing to let you play whoever you want to play. And honestly, I would say if they don't, I, I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play. I, I certainly wouldn't play. If I couldn't play the character that I actually cared about and yeah. was, was invested in, I wouldn't play. And and hey, look, I wouldn't play really in an actual play at all, you know? And that's coming from people who play D, who do a D&D &D podcast for a living. We've done an actual play before, but um, it's it's a lot. It's it's a lot. Putting yourself out there is, is, is a lot, especially with a character you don't care about. Yeah, especially with a character you don't care about. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that helps. I really, really do. Look at this situation and, and, and really think how much these things are important to you. Yeah. Are they maybe not as important as you thought? Are they definitely as important as you thought? And yeah, yeah. My honest advice would be don't bother. Yeah. But I don't know the nuance of everything. Yeah, like it sounds like a lot of... It sound, if this is the way it's beginning, how's it going to end? Do you know what That's I mean? That, when you're getting your gut... You're, you're getting a gut feeling for a reason. Yeah, and, trust uh, your gut. Trust, honestly, trust but your gut. But if you do want to be a part of it, yeah. I think you need to put some some hard lines completely. in place yeah, where completely. it's, I play the character I want to, completely. not the character you want me to. Totally, totally. But either way, good luck. Good luck to your DM for this as well, yeah. by the way. You know, anyone anyone who's putting their foot forward and trying to get into this space, um, you know, we need to welcome them with yeah, open 100%. arms. And good luck. Yeah, good but, luck. I hope uh, it goes well. And I'm not saying that... that looking at what's worked in the past isn't the right way to do it no. but i also think you have to be authentic as well and yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fucking fine line <laughs> yeah i agree uh, all right this is the penultimate penultimate this is the second to last uh this is sent in by uh you can call me vesta after my favorite animal crossing village animal hey, crossing villager cute. and they use they them pronouns thank you very much vesta Hello, first of all, love your videos. Thank you. Uh, English isn't my first language, so some grammatical errors apply. No Do problems. Do not worry about it. Doesn't matter. Ever. My goodness gracious me. Do not ever worry about it. Uh, I have been with a Looking for Group group for 10 plus sessions, and I have loved so much of it. Amazing. There has been a seedling of a problem in my head that I first want to hear your thoughts on before I express my feelings in an unproductive way to the group. Very emotionally mature of you. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> I feel like the DM doesn't want to give me heroic inspiration. This may sound ridiculous, but this is what I felt for quite a while now. Okay. The DM usually hands out one to three per session where people have saved up to three inspiration each, where I, has, I have gotten a single one in the span of the aforementioned 10 plus sessions. The DM likes to give inspiration when players think smart one-liners or quips, or in general when they make the DM laugh instead of other things like good roleplay. As previously mentioned, English isn't my first language, added with the fact that I would consider myself an unfunny person. It would often take me too long to think of anything smart to say. I have had problems with having serious conversations within sessions, as I would have to think too long before each sentence, add too many ums and ahs to get my point across, or to convey the seriousness of my character. To add to that feeling, there is a rule in our game that if you save enough inspiration, you would 
you would be once able to effectively save your character from seemingly impossible situations. Every player was given one when we started and I'm the only person to lose mine. I rolled bad on a save after a big chase sequence. Long story. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> There is also permadeath in our characters. Not permanent in a way that you can't revive the character. Permanent in a way that if your character dies, you are out of the table permanently. Wow, that's rough. All of this has made me think that my DM doesn't like me for some reason and is subtly trying to get rid of me by leaving me with no resources to save my character. Now I understand that this thought process may be a product of my anxiety and overthinking, but how should I express my feelings on this matter? Should I bring this up at all? Thank you in advance and for your advance. Your advice in advance. Okay. And this this exact scenario yeah. is exactly why I no longer use inspiration. Yeah. Because there might have been moments where you said something hilarious. There yeah, might be totally. moments where you came up with a great line. There might yeah. be moments You had great role play. We had great role play. You said something really great that really stuck with people. Uh but for a number of reasons. Maybe the dungeon master just wasn't l- listening wholly. Maybe they weren't uh in the headspace of oh, I'm gonna give out inspiration here. Maybe they were. Maybe it just didn't resonate with them the same way it resonated with other people Com- at the completely, table. Completely, like, it's, it's, it's it's subjective. It's subjective. Yeah. Like, and all of these reasons go to why it's like if I like if a player sits there and they do something great, uh, and then they get inspiration, and then somebody else does something great, but they don't give inspiration. It's just like, well, how? Huh, how well, why didn't I get weird. inspiration? And it it breeds this exact and it's because scenario. It's so subjective. Because it's subjective. Oh my baby. So. Hello, mate. <laughs> there Hello, is. pudding. So, um, uh, so look, okay. The now, now we then take that exact scenario which you're in. Yep. English isn't your first language yeah. as well, which you know maybe knocks your confidence a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you terms know you of, do have to process what, especially if you're playing yeah, in English. By the 100%. way, Jesus Christ, I can't imagine what it must be like playing in a language that isn't my my mother tongue. my mother tongue, and then having to. Think as my character. And have the pressure of, well, if I say something smart and funny or role play good, I will get inspiration. Um, and I'm the only one who doesn't have inspiration. Breathe there's, this like <laughs> pressurized a, a situation. Lot. And then you add on the fact that if I get enough inspiration, I can dig myself out of a death, death defying scenario. Because if my character dies, I'm out of the game, which I have really loved, as you've said in your own admission here. So the thing is your your dungeon master not giving you inspiration it is so indirectly tied to the fact that if you got yourself into a bad situation and yeah. then died you were kicked out the table they are so distantly tied but tied nonetheless completely you make that connection completely of well they haven't given it to me so they want me to die yeah completely yeah completely now i would say that that that's that stretch because i would say that is a little bit of a stretch yeah but i can uh, honestly i I would be walking down that same path but i can see where you've where you've drawn the line but i would say it's a little bit of a stretch yeah totally i would say that is maybe tied to a little bit of your anxiety of course of course i'm i'm not saying that you are wrong for thinking no you're very valid because because the thing is they're they're tied together they are no matter how distant they are still they are and i i I, vesta i really mean this i would honestly probably I think be going down this i i, I know a lot i of would. People who would i know i would i i would be thinking the same thing so how how do you go about this you you've said here look i've loved so much of this game which is great we've been playing for 10 sessions i'm the only one who hasn't gotten them yet go to your dm and 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 your, just your dungeon master probably hasn't even realized. oh my gosh oh my gosh your dm i don't know if maybe it's a proximity of where you sit they physically haven't seen that you don't have the inspiration especially if you haven't brought it up at table you haven't said gosh i haven't got inspiration they probably do not know let's 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 go on the side of this of being they honestly don't know and it's not a case of they want want you out of your table that's not that's not that's not why they haven't given you it no they might have not given you it for a number of reasons and the thing is i always say this when i'm the dungeon master and I've got a new city coming up, a new quest line coming up, new yep. NPCs coming up, a combat to deal with, this uh, uh, magic item that I'm giving out. I've yep. got this roleplay scene. Like, I'm not thinking about who does and doesn't have inspiration. Gosh, ev- even when we use the advantage-disadvantage tokens, 
you know, I'm, so I'm, how hard is it for you sometimes to track just who has disadvantage? Who has, I have to I'd look over the table and I'm like, who has disadvantage? It's just like, I don't, I can't keep in my head, ah, oh, they've got disadvantage, they've got disadvantage, without standing up physically and looking and over the table and looking, looking at it. And asking. Like, we've got so much in our plates. Of course. Like, these things do slip out. I, I, prom- I, I, I promise almost, you. I almost absolutely assure you that this is what's happened. So, Vesta, you go to your DM you speak to your and master. you say, hey, DM, I have really loved these sessions we've played with you. And, I I I would need to bring this up with you and I know we are not doing this intentionally but I need to talk to you about the inspiration situation and I'm talking to you about this because I know the rule is if your character dies you're out of the table and I really want to continue playing with you and I want to put because I love playing with you and I want to put my best foot forward and if it comes to a point where I fail a save I know I can stay in your game I've noticed that everyone else seems to get them and I'm the only one at the table who doesn't have them. I don't know if you noticed this or not and I haven't mentioned it, so maybe that's why. I don't have any heroic inspiration. And and I would also here's, mention... Here's, here's, here's where I would like to interject. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have any heroic inspiration and I think it's because English isn't my first language. Exa- yeah. Um. I'm not as quick to the jokes. I'm not as fluent with the role play purely because it takes me a little bit longer to process totally. those things. Is there a way that maybe through, if I do something smart in combat, yeah, if I make a nice gesture to another player, like if I buy them something, if I can do something that like, maybe you wouldn't give inspiration to everybody else, yeah, but for me, you would make a consideration. For, for me. Because it's not through role play totally. because, I, because I struggle with that aspect of the game. Could you give me some heroic inspiration if I get the killing blow on an enemy? Yes. If I do something cool in combat? Yeah. If I think of another uh, a, a NPC or yeah. a player even if and I do just, something for them? Even if I just sit and I listen to another player talking to me about something and I give them that space. Yeah. Like, there's so many ways your DM could give you this. And uh, I, I really, really think... I really think they just haven't noticed. And, and you can just say, I'm bringing this to your attention because... I just don't think you noticed. And, and I love your game, and I don't want to get myself into a situation where I don't have any insp- his- heroic inspiration to use. Yeah, yeah. And then I have to leave because I don't want that because yeah. I'm having a great time. Totally. And that conversation will will honestly open up two avenues. Yep. Your DM going, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize. I didn't notice. Yes, of course. Going forward, let's work on this. Or your DM going your dm saying the other side of it and being like yeah well you know you haven't done anything worthy of it yeah it it is what it is i don't think they'd say no 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 i don't think so either but if they do then at least through this one conversation you have your answer either way yeah you you know yeah it puts it puts that like doubt in your mind at rest totally and um i i Vesta, I think this is just a case of and this is why we don't use heroic inspiration yeah so i don't but Heroic inspiration and inspiration. Is two sorry, things. sorry, heroic. Yeah, they but, absolutely but, are. But like, yeah, it depends which one you use them because inspiration is just you do something that the dungeon master likes. Yeah, here's a here's a reroll. And that's what it sounds like is being used yeah. in this situation. Yeah. To be clear, heroic inspiration in D and D twenty twenty four is a totally different Completely thing. Completely different. Yeah. Inspiration in five e is exactly this, but you know, it, uh, the, you know, they're interchangeable. Six and two dress, yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I hope that helps, Vesta. I hope and that helps. Yep. I just want you to know you're very valid and feeling like Super this. Super valid. It's okay that you're having these thoughts and 100%. feelings. And the only way that you will clear this up is talking to DM. And so you should, by the way. Yeah. Because it, it's it's quite an intense thing to have. Uh, if your character dies, you're gone from the table. Yeah. It's 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 some, Hey, I would constantly be thinking about it. Let yeah. me tell you that and for that's, free. That's it. It's like because they're so undeniably intertwined. Yeah. But so distantly intertwined. Yeah. I understand why exactly why mm-hmm. you've got here, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I don't think that's exactly the reason your dungeon master isn't giving you it. Absolutely, I <laughs> I'll be agree. honest. I completely agree. I hope that helps, Vesta. I hope that helps, Vesta. And uh, please, Thank please you so please much for us, putting in your advice. I please let us helps. know how you get on with it. Yeah. Please, please do. All right, this is the last one. This yes. is the last of this episode. Uh, this has been sent in by Stall Brawler, and he uses he him pronouns. Thank you, Stall Brawler. Yeah. Uh, the title of this is "I'm Introducing a New Villain." How do I show off just how powerful they are? Hello, first time DM with a homebrew campaign. I'm coming up and introducing a side BBEG during a peak main story event. BBEG number two is a multiversal threat in a sense. 
there will be a 99% chance of combat ensuing and I want to try and show off just truly how much a threat he is. So my idea was to use power word kill on one of my players. I'm a little torn because I'm having trouble thinking of other ways than this to show off their power, but killing off a player and finding some way to resurrect them feels like heavy plot armor. Okay. I mean, there's... I mean, look, there's there's a million ways to introduce a PBG and make them... Scary. Scary. It could be that everybody knows of the bbeg through history books through like um word of mouth oh my god you say their name and everyone f- shudders and the lights flicker and stuff like that it's like their their way their name just carries weight you can do the whole like they just cast a really high level spell and then the players have got to deal with the fallout it also works is it a kind of feels bad in my opinion yeah because you're basically showing that they can cast high level spells which like the reason your bbeg is cool and scary isn't because they can cast yeah, high level spells it's because of who they are it's because of who they are exactly so them casting high level spells is a byproduct of them being the bbeg and being cool and awesome not why they're scary not why they're uh, scary well, uh, i mean first of all yes I mean, power would kill is very it's scary. very scary <laughs> but it's not the reason i think showing that they were two steps ahead yeah showing that yeah. they you know like i don't know all these we've been in this town for ages and all of these people have like a black tattoo under one mm-hmm. of their eyes it's like a dot mm-hmm. and then when the bbeg snaps their fingers all the people with the yeah. black dot under their yeah. eye are now under their control yeah. that that shows their magnitude totally far more. you know you say they're a multiversal threat i wonder if there's npcs the character the players care for either the npcs can honestly have been corrupted by this bbeg number two yeah and there's a betrayal and that there's nothing like an npc in my opinion there's nothing like an npc betrayal that really hurts me more yeah and makes me go whoa because anger boda that's what anger boda did yeah anger boda it wasn't necessarily a betrayal it was she was more disguising herself as people who were our allies and we found out that and it felt it was a huge betrayal um finding out that even this BBEG supersedes the friendship they have with these NPCs. Mm-hmm. That's scary. Yeah. Could you have an NPC die? Permanently die? A, a bad guy that they have known before is literally been, ra- like, that they've defeated has been raised from the dead yeah. and used as a puppet. It's just yeah, like, it's that, that thing that caused you so many problems 25 sessions ago yeah. is literally on the puppet strings totally. of this person. Yeah, man, something, that shows. something like in campaign one, the Sun Tree. Yeah. something horrible like, like burning that. down something that matters to the players yeah like i don't know you gave them a bastion and now the the bastion like lies in ruins because yeah. because the bbg just wants to show a display of yeah. power by erasing the city yeah. that they yeah you know which is where the origins of their bbeg story came yeah. from and they want to just they're so bad that they just want to erase that city from existence yeah just to think that they don't have to think about it yeah. anymore like S- that, yeah it's at the whims of the BBEG. That's what shows them. I, I agree. As powerful. Something horrible like the party have actually been manipulated this whole time by the BBEG. They've actually done exactly what the BBEG has wanted them to do. They've killed this enemy. They've gone through this town. They got the powerful artifact. They've got the powerful artifact. And they've all done it for the sake of this BBEG without even being realized. So if, uh, if you've seen campaign one critical role, like the first bad guy that the the they really come across is the brightwoods mm. and they go to whitestone yeah and they know that they're on their way to deal with them so they literally kill a bunch of innocent bystanding that's, that's what NPCs. I'm talking about, the yeah. Sun yeah yeah and then they hang them to the sun tree and they make them look like them. and they make them look like them that's just a fucking power play. Yeah, that was my exact. That was exactly yeah, what I was yeah, referring yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that shit. That shit. That is, is scary. That's scary. That's scary. But and the thing is, there's nothing scarier, in my opinion. The whole like you aren't anything for me to worry about isn't scary. That's no, not scary to me at all. The 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 bad guy knowing you're a threat and being smart enough to realize that and trying to put you off and trying to dissuade you to, tra- to trying to threaten you to try and be like i know you're coming i know you're a threat and i'm gonna try and put you off i'm gonna try and scare you i'm gonna try and get in your head i'm gonna yeah. try and put you off that 
is a real BBU. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, also Stall Brawler, there's something to be said. O- honestly, if you did want to go down the power world word kill route, kill a character, have them come back. T- there, is, there is some merit to there's that, merit honestly. There's merit to that, yeah. B- because if, if your players are more mechanically minded as well, especially, you know, something like this for us, uh, there has been situations where this has happened. Laura. Yeah. When, well, the, the last campaign would have come out by now anyway. Uh, yeah. Laura, who was in Abby Dale's ca- backstory, she was the, one of the BBEGs. We encountered her in a situation and it was very fucking scary because to be fair, it was perfect situations for her. She was an assassin rogue and she snuck, she, she it surprised us. We got a glimpse of her power and we were like, holy shit, we need to really prepare for all of these inevitabilities because that was fucking scary. And yeah. we constantly talked about it. So having, like, having the BBG show they have power word kill means next time they face them, your players are going to be like, we need to do everything in our power to not let this happen again. So like this, the situation that I had was there was two people who were the bad guys. There was Jude Brickia yeah. and Laura. Yeah. And they were like a duo. They were working together. They wanted to go to Wall Town to, you know, fucking do stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, they knew that the players were onto them. So Dale and Abby switched places. Their character, Laura and, and Dale, switched places. Uh, and Stuart Barikia was taunting Dale mm-hmm. and saying, like, we're going to Walltown. Town. Do not come here. Like, she's going to kill all of your friends right now. So mm-hmm. it's just going to be you alone. Yeah, so don't bother. And, you know, like, he was, you know preying on that insecurity and there was just like a little bit of role play at the same time mm-hmm. as, a, as a display of power whereas laura was like i'm just gonna try and kill everyone yeah i'm gonna try and just which like, she nearly did which she nearly did she downed two people in the second round of combat yeah. like she was dangerous and doing that role play of like letting them in onto what i was doing and you know there was other things that we found out yeah. later on whilst having the display of power meant more than just her trying to assassinate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, you know, there, there is merit in it. There, there is merit in yeah, there seeing is. power word kill and having your players being like, holy fucking shit. Okay, well, next time we see BBG number two, we really need to take that into account because it's scary, mm. you know. But I, I think couple, couple that with a few other things if you want to go down that route. And again, you know, is there instead of a player character who could be revived? An NPC yeah, that is there can, an NPC, can't be revived. Yeah, an NPC they care that about. That they really maybe. care about, yeah. Yeah, like, totally. There's nothing that hits harder. Like maybe, I don't know, this, this powerful NPC is intrinsically tied with the the bbeg for some reason mm. maybe they're the student mm. uh like i don't know maybe that, yeah well we don't we don't know, like really. a palpatine uh darth vader sort of thing like a coming of age or something like that or maybe an obi-wan vader thing where obi-wan like showed them how to fight and this is the moment where they kill their master or something mm, like that mm. like make it have weight in that storytelling narrative but also they killed them with power word kill and there's no way to revive them. Oh, we talking about the NPC here? Yes. Right, sorry. I thought you were talking about BBEG2 against BBEG1. No, no, no. Sorry. So like NPC trained BBEG. Yeah, yeah, great. BBEG rose way higher. Yeah, love that. Yeah. And now wants to kill. Yeah, love that. uh, For some whatever reason. I mean, just like give it like that slight sexy narrative twist as well as being like, I cast power word kill. On on this person you care about. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. There is many, many ways you can do it. Stall Brawler. Um, I, I I really don't think even even the the situation you've given here is a bad shout. I I, don't re- I really shout don't. Uh, there's many ways. Uh, Stall brawler. I would think. What in the past has got your players' blood pumping? Yeah. What have you done before that's made them really go, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? What's really made them do that? Are they more roleplay based? Are they more mechanical based? Is there, is, is there someone who is the note taker who would be able to piece together all these things? You know, think about your party composition and what they care about and um, make a decision based off that is my best suggestion but there's lo- loads of things there and you know a- anyone here in uh watching this video if you have any suggestions for stall brawler as well how you introduced the new villain how your players were terrified of them let it let them know yeah yeah that's it that's it and that's it i hope you enjoyed yourself yeah that was that was nice that was nice doing some advice yeah. it was yeah i like doing advice yeah me too like advice. me too i love doing some advice I like digging deep in my brain to try yeah. and find ways to help people Thank you so much for being here. It was great to see you. It was. It was wonderful having you. Make sure that you check out the Pride Collection and or just any merch. 
uh, on www.ldgpodblast.co.uk. Please go and check that out. The Pride Collection sales will go to the charity local to us, LGBTQIA plus Hat Gables. Yes. Um, come join us on Twitch every Friday, every Sunday, every other Tuesday for some advice like this and to, to just hang out and get to uh, get to chat with us and stuff. Yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Neil? No. No? No. 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 Check out Patreon down below yeah. in the description. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Bully loves oh, you. Oh, yeah. We have been the Eldritch Pod Blast, and we're going to see you on Monday. Yes. Bye. Bye. And another huge thank you to our patrons for all of your support. A big shout out to our fellow entities. Boobs. Ariel. Tula. Runarian. Akam Labs Cosplay. Maddie. Luna. Teddy Saurus. Caspian. J Spot. Ultrafail. Dallin M. Sleepy. Joe Dragonlord 2. Alistar. Lawkeeper Society. Ricky B. Danny Phantom. Catherine. Faustkin. Azuriel. Panda Queen Plays. Xylo Boy. Lucas Iapetus. Luna River. Crystalmancy. The Tacos are here. Gavin. Rain Anana. Aubrey in Spring. Scrimbles. KC Joe 1313. Keplin 1000. Thank you again for all your support. And if you too would like to become a patron of the Elvish Podblast, check the link below.